join the Western Conference champions. For Captain Steve Eisenman, it had taken 14 seasons to make the final. However, just getting there would not be enough. Philadelphia. Even William Penn was dressed for the occasion. One of the big questions prior to the series was who the Flyers would opt for in net. After a solid conference final, Ron Hextall got the nod. Unfortunately for Hextall, sloppy play by his teammates was costly early, as Chris Draper and Kirk Malfi combined for a shorthanded goal to open the scoring. Unfazed, the Flyers struck back on the same power play. Rod Brindamore whacked home his 11th goal of the playoffs to tie the game at one. Despite the goal, the Red Wings continued to do the things that win championships. Joey Koser not only kept a close eye on Eric Lindros, but he also used those lethal hands to break a 1-1 tie. took a 3-2 lead into the third period. Steve Eisenman beat Hextall with a 60-footer. The Flyers never recovered, and Detroit walked away with a 4-2 opening game win. With home ice advantage now lost, the Flyers were ready to feed off their fans' energy for a better effort in game two. With a goaltending problem now fully exposed, the Flyers went back to Garth Snow, sending Ron Hextall back to the bench. In the Red Wings net, it was Vernon once again. Just a buck 37 in, the long goal haunted the Flyers again. Brendan Shanahan connecting on the 45-footer. The Flyers searched for answers, but on the power play, Eisenman banged home his own rebound for a 2-0 lead. With Philadelphia on the verge of digging themselves an inescapable hole, they looked for a source to restore their lost confidence. With the Flyers on the power play late in the period, Rod Brindamore tipped home Yanni Nienema's point shot to close the gap to a single goal. 109 later, on another power play, Brindamore once again tipped home a Nienema's shot to tie the game. But once more, GM Bobby Clark would see his team victimized by shoddy goaltending. Early in the second, Kirk Maltby's long drive eluded Snow to put Detroit back in front. Meanwhile, the tone of the series was beginning to show on the faces of both teams. When the Flyers did manage to mount an attack, Vernon continued to display the consistency that would make him a Conn Smythe Trophy candidate. Midway through the third period, Shanahan one-timed his second goal by Snow to seal the Red Wings' second straight 4-2 win. The Flyers were in trouble while the Wings were heading home for a date with destiny. Stanley Cup drought, but this team was showing they had learned their lessons from the past and were ready to stand the self-proclaimed hockey town on its collective ear. Terry Murray's team reeling, and it wouldn't take long for more misery. Uh, Slot held it in, the right was on the power play up, Elias in the middle, there he is. And it got worse. Better off drops at LaPointe in front again. The shot. For Eric Lindros and Ron Hextall, reality was setting in. They had run into a juggernaut. It was 4-1 late in the second when Brendan Shanahan banked a shot in off Hextall. Martin LaPointe would add his second goal in the final frame for a 6-1 triumph. It was all over, but for the coronation and the end to a 42-year-old drought. With the headlines screaming with anticipation, much of the attention turned to Terry Murray's assessment of his team between games three and four. It's basically a choking situation that I call it for our team right now, and, and that can turn around. I mean, the, the one thing about, about going through that phase is it, it's a mental block as much as anything. It was very disappointing in how we performed. I was actually very pissed off about how we performed. It's got to be a lot better from our top line right through to our, our fourth line. And if I sat here last night and said that uh, after being down three games, that our goal right now is to that, that we're going to go and win the Stanley Cup. I would only be bullshitting you, and I said that last night. When game four arrived, the Flyers' fragile psyche would be put to the test against the team on the cusp of a championship. The 
Flyers held their own until the final minute of the first period when Nicholas Lidstrom got Detroit on the board on a long shot. Though not severely tested, Mike Vernon continued to play at the top of his game, and his teammates did so as well, frustrating the Flyers and setting the stage for the cup-winning goal. Darren McCarty comes back with Neiman on front of him. McCarty draws. McCarty in. McCarty! Trying to get the sweep. Three seconds left. Into the zone. The Detroit Red Wings on the Stanley Cup. Detroit Stanley Cup triumph was one of many dimensions. It was a team that had endured failure. One which held together when many doubted them. It was a team that used every element in its arsenal in order to maximize its efficiency. It was a triumph of desire, determination, perseverance, and plain old guts. The Detroit Red Wings, 1990. Beginning with the Calgary Flames. Early in the first period, Detroit with the extra man, Slava Kozlov. Finding Doug Brown where he wants to be, and he beats Rick Tabarachi. It's 1-0 Wings. Power play goal. Rick Tabarachi would keep Calgary close. The veteran, the sliding kick save on Brendan Shanahan. More of Tabarachi. This time, oh, look at this. All alone is Brent Gilchrist, but swabbed by Tabarachi. Still in the first hard-hitting action because this is hockey, and it's legal. Darren McCarty nailing Steve Bajan. Second period, still 1-0 Wings. Two flames in the box. Red Wings, would they take advantage on the two-man advantage? LaPointe to Lidstrom, and it's a goal that Brendan Shanahan would get credited with. 2-0 Detroit. The Wings are playing this game without Sergei Fedorov, who continues to send a jersey. Yippee. Hurricanes hitting. Enrico Ciccone putting the hit on his former teammate, Cicerelli. Hogan likes it. Lightning up 1-0. Michael Renberg off the pass by Cicerelli. It's a power play goal. Lightning up 2-0. Second period was 2-1 Tampa. Steve Chason. Nelson Emerson puts in the rebound off of Darren Pupa. And look at Keith Primo in front, taking it for the team. Emerson's first. We're tied at two. Score tied at two. Same for Wesley pulling down Cicerelli. That's a power play for the Lightning. Dino Cicerelli. So dangerous in front. What is Dino doing all alone in front of the net? Lightning win it four to two. Up two on one. Is there anything more exciting? Alexei Marozov for the goal. Well, a penalty shot is more exciting, actually. Marozov's first NHL goal. It's 2 nothing Pittsburgh. It was 2-1. And then Gary Galli would tie up the game, blowing it by Tom Barrasso. Tied at two. 3-2 L.A. after a Robitaille goal. Pens with the extra man. It's Hatcher, the shot. Stefan Fassé, the save. And Hatcher puts in the rebound. His second of the game. We're tied. To overtime we go. We're in sudden death overtime. Martin Straka. Yaga open, but this is the one-timer. Still a little rusty. It's the first game. Mario Lemieux, he'll take a tie. He's just enjoying life. As Rocky Bird and Sean O'Donnell greet Pat LaFontaine in his 800th career game. Third period, 2-1 Kings under a minute to play. And Mark Savard scores to tie the game. But the ref reviewed the play and noticed that LaFontaine's skate was in the crease. No goal. Rangers continue to apply the pressure. Ten seconds to go. Guess who comes calling on the doorstep? It is Stevens. <laughs> Ref review this one, too. The goal stands, even though Kings coach Larry Robinson would argue about Stevens' skate being in the crease. Luke Robitaille saying that's not fair. They cheated. 2-2, two, two, the final in this one. The Kings have won just two of their last 15. 39 goals to go for Stevens in that new Cadillac. Sabres and Lightning. One of the Sabres offseason acquisitions, Elmo. Elmo's got to work on his defense. Alexander Selivanov threatening in the first. Elmo is there, and that is just Matador defense. Tampa goes up 1-0. Burt and Ernie never would have let that happen. In the second, Jason Daw. No. Michael Grosick. No. Daw. Yeah. Tied it at one. That's how it would end. The highlight of the highlight, Elmo. Uh, Goaltending clinic in this game, Darren Pupa stops 36 shots. Shot, he overskates it, and Forsberg again. In with Kamensky, Clem is the late man. Forsberg beats a man, he'll walk in a drive. Oh, and a dandy by Joseph on Forsberg. With a left defense 
defenseman for Edmonton. Brian Marchand has a tendency to come across hard and try and make the big hit. Well, Forsberg reads it. Now watch Forsberg coming across right here. It doesn't even look like he saw the man, but he did. And then when his man is out of position, right there, Forsberg explodes into the opening and has the great shot. Watch the defenseman coming from the side. He thought he had him lined up. One of the best open ice hitters, and all of a sudden, Forsberg right in alone on top of Joseph. Something going. Lacroix for Corbet. In front. Wide open. Eric Lacroix. The shot and a save by Joseph. It was loose in front for a moment. But knocked away, but not out. Now Boris Miranoff, number two. Again, the Oilers fail to clear it. This is where they got in trouble the other night. Running around. Fessier drive. Rebound. And a quick whistle. It was knocked into the goal, but now up the boards. Fruit there. Stolen. Forsberg shoots. He scores! What a rocket by Forsberg on a giveaway. And the Avalanche lead it 1-0. Well, John, interesting play. Lat as Denmarsh turns and shoots, and it was on the last break that Forsberg had. He went to the same place. Didn't get it as high as he did this time. A perfect shot by Peter Forsberg. So that defensive responsibility that the Avalanche are showing has come to play here in the first three games. What a shot by Forsberg. Comes right across and levels the man standing there. Right side of your screen. Watch foot. Number 52 come in. Waits banging away. Boom. Make him pay the price. That's what you have to do. And again, John, the idea is the next time maybe that player isn't quite to break Barahowski. Barahowski tees it up and missed the goal by a foot. It comes in front. Wait a shot. And while the glove save, Gusarov is back on the ice. And here's Forsberg with each team a man short. Forsberg dumped to the ice. Here come the Oilers. Wait in front. Oh, Kovalenko had it knocked away. At the line, it had to go off his skate. Now back to Wait for Miranoff. Doug Wait to Miranoff. Club shot, and that was high. And it sailed into the capacity. Wins it now back for Wait. Smith out of the box. Five on three. Smith gets it. Hit the side of the goal. Rebound. Oh, more shot. Highway robbery by Patrick Waugh. screen right here. Boom, with so much down low. Beautiful reaction, beautiful read. That's as good a save right there as Tabarachi's was the other night against Kaminsky. That's as good a save as you're going to see. And even after the save right there, see how quickly he's up? Eyes glued to the puck. Still five on three. Avalanche with a one-nothing lead. Wade and Mirren off the point. Man, this is Wade. Turn traffic. Save by Waugh. Rebound in the deep slot. Grabbed by Arnett. Down to Mirren off. Here comes Wade. Mirren off. The blast. And a save by Waugh. With a couple of seconds to go in the five on three. Patrick was talking in that first game. We talked about it last game a little bit. He's a, he has to get back in the rhythm, back into anticipating the play. And right there is a good example. As that pass was coming across, he was moving across, but also out. To well, if the Oilers don't score on this power play, this is where a young team can start to press. Here's a break now for Greer. In the clear! Oh! Wow, knocked him over, and he never got a shot. He was around Wall the net. I think Lefebvre may have got a stick on the stick of Greer. Side of the goal! Greer is there! And Wall to save with some help. He covers it. Moving the puck. Here's Wade's first play. Now watch the right side. See if Lefebvre doesn't get a stick on Greer. Yeah, just... You know, that is a great veteran play by Lefebvre. He went down under and hit the hand of Greer so he couldn't put the puck on net. Second year, had his big night, scored his first goal ever in the National Hockey League.